Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Maney. I'm, um, I'm a columnist for, about technology with Newsweek, I've written a whole bunch of books, and um, I am uh, collaborating right now with a Silicon Valley firm that is uh, uh, one of the premier startup coaches, uh, and they're called Play Bigger. And we've, we've been on this year-long, probably another year or so, research project into um, this phenomenon we call Category Kings. Now, Category Kings are these companies that pop up that um, create and define an entirely new category of business that never existed before. Um, you know, Uber is a good example of a Category King. They, uh, this was something that just was invented out of thin air. We have some others in the, you know, in the room. Uh, we have Salesforce.com, which was a great example of a Category King, which created this enterprise cloud um, software that really never existed before. Airbnb, these guys are trying to do some of the same kind of thing here. Um, and we've, we're studying these because these are some of the companies that tend to have super explosive growth and, um, and really change the world. Now there are two, well, there are a whole bunch of, what we're finding is there are a whole bunch of char characteristics of these category kings, what they do and how they get to the spot that are similar. And we're trying to tease those out and understand and be able to, um, to tell others what those are. So let me go over two of those um, characteristics, two really important ones of category kings. So one of those is that category kings are different, not better. So if you think about it, better, trying to create something that's just better than something that already exists, you're by definition going into someone else's space and fighting for market share that already exists. Better is Bing trying to beat Google. Microsoft has spent something like $10 billion on Bing, and we really don't care for the most part. Uh, so different is coming into a marketplace and um, creating this entirely new space that never existed before, doing something that never, people didn't do before. Uber is not better taxis. Uber is completely different from taxis. So, um, and, and when, you, when you create, an, when you're different and you create this new space, you're essentially not eating market share from someone else. You're creating a new space and taking almost all the market share from that new space. And new categories tend to disrupt old categories, like the new category of what Uber is is disrupting this old category of taxi cabs. So different, not better. That's the first uh, principle of these category kings. A second thing is that category kings, um, they, they, focus on, they focus on building the entire category um, as much as they do about building this new product in this new company. They have to do this because what they're creating is something that didn't exist before. So people, there, there's not automatically demand for it. People don't quite understand at first what this thing is. Um, Salesforce, when it created its company, had to go out and evangelize the very idea of being able to run an enterprise on, on something in the cloud. That was not something that, was, that people really readily accepted when this company was formed. Uh, and, and there's no ecosystem to sort of, you know, uh, hold that, that new category together because it's brand new. Now let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a story uh, from about 100 years ago that helps illustrate what this idea of, uh, of building a category and a company and a product at the same time. So go back to the early 1900s and the very idea of frozen food did not exist. Okay? Um, there was this guy. He was actually born in Brooklyn. And his, his, his name was Clarence Birdseye. There's a, a Birdseye brand today, but it was actually spelled B-I-R-D-S-E-Y-E. -E. It was one name, Clarence Birdseye. Clarence Birdseye grew up in Brooklyn. He had this odd hobby of taxidermy, something he really liked to do as a kid. I guess you could do that in Brooklyn in you know, the eight, late 1800s. Um, and this led to him taking a job with the U.S. Uh, US Forest Service, and that landed him at a post um, up in Alaska with Eskimos. And he was up there, and he noticed that what would happen was these Eskimos would do um, ice fishing, and they'd, they'd, they'd pull a fish out of the water, and they'd throw it on the ice. And it was so cold that the fish would fa fa uh, flash freeze, essentially, on that cake of ice. And he noticed that later, when you thawed that fish out, it had the kind of texture of a fresh fish instead of like something that had been um, you know, just, just uh, frozen in, in a very much, in a slower way. Now this was around the time when 
a lot of new te technologies were, were around. Um, electricity was first starting to get into homes. With electricity came the first freezers and ice boxes and those kinds of things. And so we had this insight, this original sort of technology insight that flash freezing food might be an interesting thing, an interesting new thing. So he came back to New York and he started experimenting with, uh, with freezing fish between cakes of dry ice and realized this could work. And then, you know, he thought this, this, this was pretty interesting. So he started trying other things like vegetables and fruits and, you know, what, what else could work? Uh, and he started to realize that there was this thing you could do. This, you could freeze foods and, and it would be a better um, result at the end. Now, he decided he wanted to build a business around this, but there was no such thing as frozen foods in any aspect. So one of the things he had to do was he actually had to invent the idea of a refrigerated car for railroads and then go and sell the railroads on the idea of putting these on their, uh, in their system. He had to actually invent the idea of a frozen food case in a grocery store and go out and sell grocers on the idea of doing this. So he had to start to build this whole category and this idea um, around frozen food from scratch and then advertise it to the public and create demand that never existed before. And again, he, create, he, he, he advertised frozen food as something that was different from canned food or from fresh food or for anything than anything that had come before. And eventually, um, in the, by the late 1920s, there was this new business called frozen food under the brand of bird's eye. So the, um, where that comes back to here is, um, we want to talk about uh, how to create category kings in this space where you, you guys are, talent acquisition. And um, so the challenge for you is, I'm sure that, you know, like all of you could probably in two seconds rattle off things that could be done better in your industry, ways that a piece of technology or, or some practice in, in your space could be better. The hard thing to, differ, to think about is what could be completely different. What could really change the game? And, and uh, so when you go into your groups today, the idea is to, to talk about what could be a category king in the space that you're in. So that's going to be your challenge. How do you create a bird's eye in the talent business in this day and age? So Norm, I'll give it back to you to um, add any instructions. 